We got a ton of super helpful tips in this video that might help you take your collecting to the next level. Stay tuned. Bryce Comics. Check me out this Friday on Whatnot. We're gonna have 50 slabs starting at $1 each with giveaways every 10 minutes, including slabs. Link down in the description to get $10 off your first purchase on Whatnot. And in this video, we're gonna talk about CPR. We're gonna talk about what is comic book CPR or crack press resubmit. We're gonna talk about major rookie mistakes that I've made that hopefully you can avoid and save yourself hundreds if not thousands of dollars. We're gonna talk about the cost of CPR CPR. Then we're going to go over actual examples from a collection that I just picked up and go through my process of screening a new collection for CPR candidates. On that note, I am still currently buying collections, but I'm buying right now at 60% of FMV. I usually offer 70% of FMV, but what was happening uh, was I was getting the books and the market in this down market, they were down 10 or 20%. And then I offer 10% off uh, of FMV on my website. So there went my profit margin. So I had to go down to 60%. And I understand understand that for a lot of people, and it has been a lot less collections coming through. I totally understand that. You know, I always encourage people, you know, start those channels yourself to buy and sell your own books. Start an Instagram page, start an eBay page, and sell just one book a month just to get your feedback going to help increase the liquidity of your collection. Um, but if you don't always have time for that, you know, I consider myself a great resource to be able to just send me an email. Say you have a hundred slabs, maybe you want to liquidate those 100 slabs and turn it into three or four like holy grails and you can send me an email i'll send you an offer within hours usually you can ship them the next day and you have money in your pocket by the end of the week so i understand that it doesn't work for everyone always encourage you to sell your own books um, if you can if you have time um, and one way to look at it is uh, you know no one knows where the bottom is for this market so 60 percent of today's value could be 80 percent of next month's value and vice versa you know if the market starts to go back up 60 percent of today it could be 50% of next month's value. So it's a very personal decision to sell your comic books. Um, and it's really up to you in the position that you're in. I, I do believe that this person wanted to liquidate all of these and buy one big grail at a comic con. So um, it's a great time to be cash heavy in today's market. There's crazy deals going on at auction houses. So it it's, might be a good time to consider, uh, you know, liquidating and being super cash heavy, sitting on a pile of cash and waiting for those crazy rare opportunities that are presenting themselves themselves um, at auction houses. I have a new video coming soon to talk about that. So what is CPR? CPR is crack press resubmit. And that's when you take a book that's already graded, crack it out uh, because you see identifiable pressable defects, press those defects out um, and resubmit and hope for a higher grade. I did a whole video on what are pressable defects. I might need to redo that. Um, but essentially any non-color breaking defect is usually uh, pressable or cleanable um, in most cases. And we'll go over a bunch of examples here in just a moment. And there is a ton of nuance to CPR. You know, I just did a video about how even if you do get the desired grade bump that you're going for in a down market, the grade bumped book could actually be worth less than it was before you did the CPR. So there's a lot of nuance to it. It really does have to be a slam dunk, in my opinion, to do it. Like when I first started, I thought everything was uh, a CPR candidate. And I've, what I've learned through trial and error is that only, you know, you should be really, really selective about what you decide to crack, press, and resubmit. But when you do find those white whales, those rare opportunities for a slam dunk thing, it can be an incredibly lucrative way to fund the hobby. So let's talk about major rookie mistakes that I've made and that you can hopefully avoid. Rookie mistake number one is thinking that just because there's pressable defects, assuming that if you improve those, you'll get a higher grade. I remember when I was first starting out, I would look at a book, even if it was a 5.0 or a 6.0, if it had a tiny little crease, and I thought, oh, well, if I can just press that out, surely it'll go up from a 5.0 to a 5.5. But the thing to remember is that every time that CGC grades a book, it's like the first time they're seeing the book, okay? If this thing was graded years ago, they're not looking at it like it's the same book that you submitted. 
as the submitter, we're thinking that. We're thinking like, it was a 5.0, I got rid of that crease. How could it still be a 5.0? What you have to realize is CGC, it's like they're seeing the book for the first time. They're grading it with a new set of eyes and there's nuance and subjectivity to this. So it's kind of a little hurdle that you have to get out of is just thinking that if there's pressable defects, that if you improve them, you'll automatically get a grade bump. That's not the case. One of the big nuances to this is when the books were graded, CGC grading standards have changed over time. I'm sure it's the same for CBCS as well. Uh, they've been looser and sometimes stricter in other times. Uh, when those dates are, are debatable, but it's just something to keep in mind is that uh, their grading standards have changed over time. So I, I'll put a link in the, in the description to a video where I posted, I, I had a book that was an 8.5. I improved something like 16 defects on it, and it still came back in 8.5. The second rookie mistake is relying on the grader's notes, okay? Grader's notes are offensive at worst and frustrating at best, okay? Grader's notes uh, from CGC are not exhaustive. Sometimes they're non-existent, um, and they don't actually have to put everything in the grader's notes. I've heard it explained by from CGC something like they're more like uh, notes between graders, all kinds of crazy stuff I've heard about the explanation for grader's notes. But the takeaway from this is that they are not exhaustive. You cannot rely on them. So if you have a 9.2 that just says small bend, left bottom of front cover, if you assume that that's the only defect, that could be a very costly lesson for you because you could crack it out and see, oh my gosh, there's all this other stuff on here that's wrong with the book that wasn't in the grader's notes um, that is in addition to that. So don't assume that the grader's notes are exhaustive and don't go on that alone. They can be super helpful in identifying CPR candidates, uh, but they're only part of the story. Uh, rookie mistake number three is you cannot see all defects through the case. I know these are clear cases, but they absolutely obscure a lot of defects that when you crack a book out and see it under a different light, you see a whole bunch of stuff that you didn't see before. So there is an outer plastic case, there's an inner well, there's multiple layers of plastic in between you and the book. So when you actually crack it out, it looks a lot different than it does through the case. All right, so let's talk about the cost of CPR. And these are just really uh, rough numbers to get an idea of how much it costs. It's about $24 to have a modern book graded by CGC, but then you have shipping back and forth. Let's just call it 20 bucks. You have pressing fees. Let's call it 40 bucks. And then you have shipping back and forth through the presser. So this is assuming that you're using a presser for these services. The modern book would be about $109 all in to have one book pressed and cleaned and resubmitted and graded. If it was a pre-1975 or the economy tier at CGC, you see it's about a $35 fee right now, but a 235 day turnaround time uh, for economy at CGC, which means it's a no brainer to do fast track $15 more, bringing the grading fees to $50 for pre-1975 with a 26 day turnaround time. Absolute no brainer to do fast track on economy right now, shipping back and forth $20, pressing again 40 bucks um, and shipping back and forth the press. So about 135 for a pre-1975 book. And then express and walkthroughs $130 for express and a minimum of 150 for walkthrough or 3% of the fair market value. So this is where it could get really pricey, especially with uh, the pressing. Sometimes pressers charge a percentage of the fair market value for incredibly valuable books. Um, so it could get really pricey to do a, a high value book. A little note on the pressing. You guys, just be careful with using Instagram pressers. There is a lot of really good pressers on Instagram, and there is a lot of garbage pressers on Instagram that are practicing and learning their craft on your books. And I think that that's absolutely absurd. There's people that just started pressing, just bought their own press, and they're open for submissions. And I mean, I've seen people, this was months ago, I'm not sure if they're still doing it, but I saw one guy post a picture where he's pressing out a little crease and he's using Teflon paper. And in his before and after pictures, you can see that he pressed into the book a texture over the entire cover of the book. And people are commenting on it like, wow, you're getting really good at this. No, you're not. You just ruined that book and otherwise 9.8 where you pressed in texture from Teflon over the entire cover is now like an 8.0. And I'm seeing people get these books back and post them on Instagram and say, why is this an 8.0? The notes say canvassing. Well, canvassing is from poor pressing and other notes like uh, butterflied edges is also from poor pressing. That's when, um, you know, you either have the heat too high or you take it out too soon. It doesn't cool down in the press and the, the edges flare up and that's called butterflying. So uh, 
if you, I'm seeing a lot of this with these new inexperienced pressers on Instagram. So just be careful. That's why it's important. You know, I say $40 for the cost of pressing. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a quick press for a modern book. I'm talking about a book that needs a lot of attention to detail. Every book that I'm talking about here, if it was pressed would need humidity chamber, you know, a 24 hour press on each side with a long cool down in between tack iron on it, detail work on the book, possibly a second humidification cleaning. You know, all of that takes a ton of time. It really needs a lot of treatment for most books for a Silver Age book to get it to be the best that it could possibly be. And don't be afraid to pay those fees. You know, I, I would rather pay, uh, you know, more money, twice as much money, knowing that I'm going to have, uh, you know, the attention and care to that book that it actually deserves. All right, so now let's talk about some actual examples going over this awesome collection that I just picked up. I picked this up for 60% of FMV. I paid about $4,600. and I think it's about a little over $7,000 in value. Some awesome books. Um, and let's hop into it. All right, so starting us off, we have Amazing Spider-Man number 238, the first appearance of the Hobgoblin with the tattoos, 8.5 newsstand edition. And the graders notes say, spine stress lines breaks color. And so as you can see, there are just a few uh, spine stress lines a couple of little things go, going on around the staple, not too bad, but there's a pretty big one right there, right in the center of the screen. Two ticks right there, one, two, there's another small one, three, uh, there's another small one by the staple, four, another tiny one, five, six, so six small uh, color break increases on the spine. I think that alone will tap this book out at like a 9.4. Uh, at its best day and it, the greater notes also say whole book multiple creases and so this is a book that just it hasn't been uh, pressed you can see like right there is a is a little crease and there's stuff like that going on all over the cover of the book that can easily be pressed out so i think everything can be pressed out the spine ticks can be um, flattened but not removed because they break colors so i think best case scenario it gets a 9.4 and this book has what appears to be right here a printer's crease and a printer's crease is different from a handling crease printer's crease is allowed in a 9.8 i've seen a silver age book with a printer's crease this long that went all the way across here and it still got a 9.8 the printer's crease is kind of like when the pages uh, if this is the same page it was like pressed up against each other and it forms a little ridge so if this is the flat paper it forms a ridge that goes this way kind of like the formation of a mountain in real geography um, and you'll notice you'll know it when you see it and i do believe that's a printer's crease that's allowed so here we can see the 8.5 newsstand last sold for 511 dollars in july best case scenario it gets a 9.4 and most recently a 9.4 newsstand sold for 650 in july so 650 for a 9.4 511 for an 85 so about $150 increase but it's going to cost you at least $110 to crack press and resubmit it so best case scenario you have a $40 increase in value I don't believe it's worth it I think it makes more sense just to buy the 94 newsstand as is already Star Wars number 1 in a 9.0 with white pages graders notes say light bends to cover and this also is a book that appears like it has not been pressed or clean there's light bends like that throughout which are easily pressed out light creasing to cover and so this one also has uh, light spine stress lines to cover so there you can see those light spine stress lines that could be greatly improved um, on the cover so i think this one taps out at a 9.4 on its best day all right, so for Star Wars, number one, a 9.0 uh, sold in July for $375. But as you can see, this book is trending down. So $375 for a 9.0 um, and a 9.4, which would be probably the best case scenario, is $556. So $556 versus $375, let's say it's about $200, but it's $110 to crack press and resubmit. So now you have a $90 profit and it's trending down. So it's very likely by the time you get it back that it's gone down 10, 20 or 30% in value and there goes your profit margin. So it just wouldn't make sense uh, in this instance to crack and press it. 
Amazing Spider-Man number 19, the first appearance of Mac Gargan in Cameo. And the greatest ones say full right whole book foxing, full top whole book foxing, and spine multiple bend breaks color. So first let's take a look at the foxing. So here you can see it along this edge. Here is those little brown rusts or dirt looking spots all the way on the front of the cover. It's also present on the top edge. And for the spine multiple bend, it's a lot harder to see uh, because it's a white cover and the white cover kind of hides the spine ticks. But there are, you know, multiple bends along the spine, but they're minimal. And here on the back, you can see more of the foxing along the back edge. And this is one where the foxing looks a little bit different up on here. It's a little bit darker in this area. Has me a little concerned that that would be uh, pretty difficult to remove. So I think without the, the, the foxing, this book is a 9-0. So here we have Amazing Spider-Man number 19 in the 7.5. And in a 7.5, it's $664 in June. And this book is easily a 9.0 if you can get rid of that uh, foxing and cover tanning. So if we went up to a 9.0, 1,763 in March versus the 7.5 is 664. So probably safe to say at least a thousand dollar increase to go from a 7.5 to a 9.0. Um, and it's going to cost you, since it's Silver Age, it's going to cost you at least $135 to crack and press it. So it is definitely worth it if you are confident in a presser that has had a lot of success with foxing and cover tanning. And that is a big wild card. That's a big if. Um, a worst case scenario, you know, maybe you damage the book trying to get rid of the foxing and it comes back like a 6.0. So, you know, worst case scenario, it's a couple hundred dollar loss. Best case scenario, it's a thousand dollar gain. So I would say the only way I would do this is if I had uh, a presser that was really confident with foxing removal and that they looked at the book and thought that they would have good success with it. Invincible Iron Man number one in a 7.5. Uh, origin of Iron Man retold. The first ongoing solo titled series for Iron Man. Classic cover awesome book and this is one of those books that i feel like it's really hard to get a good presenting copy because the d colors are so dark but as you can see with this one i mean it is just a deep color strike really really nice reds and yellows and dark purples and blues just a really good presenting copy of this book this is going to be a tough book to sell so the graders notes say bottom front cover small bend breaks color and this is one of the most limiting defects on this book is this color break increase and you'll see this a lot these are limiting defects like sometimes it'll be heavy multiple creases on the corner and and you'll start to recognize that you know the max grade it can get with the certain amount of creasing is it light is it moderate is it heavy um, so this is definitely light but it kind of limits it, I think, from going any higher than, um, I mean, at its best day, if everything else was perfect, probably an 8085 with that kind of creasing. Center spine wear breaks color. Breaks color is right there. It almost looks like a color rub. Right bottom front cover, small crease breaks color. Right bottom front cover. So that's actually the creasing that they're talking about there. Bottom of front cover, small bend breaks color must be just over here. There's just multiple uh, color breaking uh, bends and creases along the cover here. Top back cover, small light bend. So as you can see on the back cover, we have, you know, small bends along that top edge as well. Top front cover small bend breaks color. So right here, you can see uh, this bend that breaks color, probably due to an overhang of the cover and the pages and just, you know, over time it just folded over a little bit. So this book definitely doesn't have any chance at getting a grade bump and it's a beautiful presenting copy as is. Avengers number two in a 6.0. So it says light creasing to cover, light tracing center of front cover, and spine stress lines break 
color. For the light creasing to cover, you can see that there's just, there's areas like this. This book has obviously not been pressed or cleaned and there's just light uh, creases like that, like finger bends and whatnot um, over the surface of the cover that can be easily pressed out. But here is the most limiting defect on this book and that is tracing that was done over Giant Man. As you can see there, what happened was somebody put a piece of paper over the comic book and traced it. So they didn't actually, you know, put ink or anything on um, the character, but they traced it out, putting a heavy indent, probably with a ballpoint pen, um, over the character. Now that's going to be very difficult to get out because that's uh, a heavy indent. I'm not sure that you can completely remove that. Um, there probably be some remnants of that. And then as you can see on the spine, we have light spine stress lines, but they're not that bad. Like these spine stress lines, I think would be allowed in an 8.0. So I think if you take away the tracing on Giant Man there, this is a really clean, nice presenting copy of this and it could possibly get an 8.0. All right, so for Avengers number two, uh, the most recent sale, it was in April for $915. And if you are able to get it up to an 8.0, if you can completely remove uh, the tracing lines, uh, the last sale in the same month was $2,200. So over a thousand dollar increase to go from a 6.0 to an 8.0. Um, however, it's a big if um, and I wouldn't personally take that risk. Uh, let's say you just actually improved it, got it from a six to a seven. Um, well, that's about a $700 increase. Your cost into it's gonna be about 135. So you're looking at like a, a 500, $600 increase on the upside. Um, so this one is p a potential, right? And for me, it's just not worth it because of the risk factor. Like it's just a, a major if, if you can actually get those all the way out. So personally, I wouldn't do it, but at one point in my collecting career, I definitely would have taken a stab at it because there's not much of a downside, right? I don't think it's gonna go um, much below a 6.0. And so for a couple hundred bucks, I'd take a stab at a potential thousand dollar increase. But at this juncture in my career, in my collecting, I just, I just wouldn't take the risk. I'd just, you know, sell it as is. Avengers number three, the first team up of uh, Hulk and Submariner. And uh, the graders notes say light cover tanning to cover. And so you can kind of tell the light cover tanning. It's more easy to recognize in the uh, white areas. It's just like it turns a little bit brown. It is still there on the uh, other colors, but it's just harder to see. So that can be easily uh, lightened up. And then on the back, you can really tell um, the light cover tanning. Um, and that can easily be cleaned up as well, especially with this back cover because um, there's so much white. So for the light creasing to cover, we have areas like this where you can see little creases. I don't think this book has been pressed or cleaned. Uh, so there's just some non-color breaking creases throughout the book um, that can be flattened out. But there's also some other creases that, you know, nothing can be done like this color breaking crease here and some color breaking crease down on the corners and up on this corner. And then we have this little crunch on the back, which is not in the graders notes. And it looks to me like it looks fresh. Can you tell how it's kind of like, it doesn't look like a 30 or 40 year old thing. It looks like it just happened. So it's possible that that happened after grading, like during encapsulation. Um, and because it's not specifically noted in the graders notes. So this book, I think, could potentially get a bump to a 7.0 if you got rid of the cover tanning. However, it is possible that this defect here, that's not listed in the graders notes, wasn't there when they graded a 6.0. So now you have to overcome this obstacle as well. Um, and I don't think it's worth it for the price difference between a 6.0 and a 7.0 of this book. So here we have Avengers number five in a 4.0 uh, with off white to white pages and the graders notes are unavailable. There are no graders notes for a 4.0 copy. And it's just unbelievable that there's no graders notes to say why they gave this a 4.0. That in itself would probably cause me uh, a lot of hesitation to crack and press it. There's a piece out in this bottom corner. There's heavy, uh, there's moderate spine, spine wear and reader's crease. There's a potentially rusted staple right there. There's these uh, multiple uh, creases on the corner, which are, are very limiting in themselves. 
Um, and so I just don't think that this book is worth it. Uh, it's definitely not going to get more than a 5.0 on its best day. Um, so we would just leave it as is, especially with no like identifiable course of action of what the plan was to improve it. Avengers number six, the first appearance of Baron Zemo and his Masters of Evil with a Pace Pot Pete cameo. My guy, Pace Pot Pete. So the Greater's Notes say spine stress lines and tear left top of back covers. And this seems like a pretty harsh 5.0. I'll show you here in just a sec how I think this 5.0 is actually better than this 6.0. But the spine stress lines along the spine, there's also a little bit of soiling that can be improved, but they're not that bad for a 5.0. I mean, um, you'll see a lot of 5.0s with heavy, heavy spine takes compared to that. But then we have the most limiting defect on this one, which is that tear right there. But it doesn't mention that tear in the bottom of the back cover. So this is an example of how you can't rely on the greater notes. The greater notes only list two things, and there's definitely more than two things going on with this book to give it that 5.0. So this is one that you could get a weird surprise when you open it up and crack it out and say, oh my gosh, it's got this, this, and this. It's not in the Greater's Notes. Um, and so <laughs> because of that, um, I would be hesitant to crack this out. Plus, I don't think it's going to get much more than a 6.0. So I'm not sure that the upside would really be worth it. But here's a 6.0 in Avengers number seven with an awesome, awesome cover, I might add. And this says left center back cover, small stain. Left center back cover is probably somewhere in here. And I can't see it. I can't see a stain there. And this is an example of how you can't always see the defects through the case because I guarantee beyond a shadow of a doubt, that there is a stain somewhere in here. And when you crack it out, you'll see it and you go, oh yeah, there is a stain, but you can't tell what kind of stain it is. So this is a red flag because it's like, there are different types of stains. Some stains will wipe right off. Other stains are deeply embedded in the paper fibers and there's nothing you can do. So since you can't see it, that's a hesitation. Right bottom front cover, small crease. So right bottom front cover small crease is interesting because there's all kinds of stuff going on here. There's that, there's that, and there's these multiple color breaking creases. So they're calling all of this uh, right bottom front cover small crease. So uh, this is another example of how you can't rely on those graders notes because there's other stuff there that's not mentioned. Right top front cover small bend breaks co color. So there's that color breaking uh, crease and bend in the top corners that break color. Spine, multiple spine stress lines break color. So as you can see, this spine uh, has, you know, multiple color breaking creases, not terrible. But when you compare this 6.0 next to this 5.0, I mean, this 5.0 doesn't have any of the creasing going on in this corner where this has, you know, big multiples. This book, in my opinion, definitely does not present as well. Now, there could be other things that we can't see through the case, but what I think is going on here is this is a good example of how this generation of label was graded more loosely than this generation of label. I think if you sent this back in today, it would probably get a 5.0, um, and so that's a good example of that. So Avengers number eight, you know, 5.5, the first appearance of King the Conqueror. We've got moderate creasing to cover. And I'm actually having a hard time seeing the surface of this book because uh, there's really bad Newton rings on this. It's kind of hard to tell on this lighting, uh, but it's hard to get a good angle at the actual color. Oh, there you can see some creasing, some finger bends and stuff going on. So moderate is pretty bad bad as far as CGC goes. When they say moderate, it means like there's a lot of noticeable ones. So it's a white cover. It's kind of harder to see, but we'll take them at their word. They're moderate spine stress lines, moderate staining to cover. Now this is one that it's really hard for me to see on the front. On the back, there's definitely staining going on. And this staining right here is actually smudging the ink. And you've got this fingerprint right here which looks like somebody was like working on their car and they came in and read the comic book so there's different types of stains these types of stains seem like ones that can't really be fixed and then we have moderate tears to cover as you can see there 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 
and also there. So this book is a 5.5, uh, no chance at a bump. Avengers number nine, the first appearance and partial origin of Wonder Man. So it says light, multiple stain back cover, and I really can't see any. So this is, you can't always see what they're talking about uh, through the case, but I, I guarantee you that there is light, multiple stains on the back. Medium, light, multiple stain center of front cover. This one I can see. So right here in the center, there's that uh, stain right there, and there's a couple of them. So the moderate creasing to cover, could be uh, up here at this corner and, and down here at this corner. And for the moderate spine stress lines to cover, you can see just all throughout the front cover there, there's some moderate spine stress lines and small tear top of spine. So this is one that I can't really see through the case, but I guarantee you there is a tear at the top of the spine. And you've got a bunch of wear right here. So this book, probably could be improved to like a 6.0 but i don't think that the price difference is going to make that worth the effort avengers number 10 in a 7.0 with white pages the first appearance of immortus light creasing to cover and that is the biggest part there's multiple color breaking creases down there in the corner and that is a limiting defect. I don't think it can get much more than a 7.5 with creasing like that. Maybe an 8.0, 8.5 if everything else was absolutely perfect, but it's not. Avengers number 11, this is an early Spider-Man appearance. Greater notes, multiple crease, full left of front cover, breaks color. So all along the front of the spine here, you can see color breaking creases, which is uh, very, very common in a 5.0 small stain bottom of interior spine. So that's an interesting one. I've never seen that uh, note before, small stain interior bottom of spine. Obviously I can't see it because it's on the interior. Um, small stain top of spine. So that one I can see and there is nothing that can be done about this. It's some type of liquid stain. It has changed the actual integrity of the paper. Um, if you try to treat that at all, you risk uh, causing a big tear right there. So when you see a stain like that where the color of the paper is actually changed, I would just uh, leave it alone. And then you have smudge left bottom of back cover. So there's apparently a smudge somewhere around this left bottom, but I don't see it through the case, but I guarantee you there is a smudge there. So this book, in my opinion, also not worth cracking and pressing out. I just keep it as is. So there you have it guys. If this video was helpful in any way, please consider grabbing that subscribe button, like this video, comment down below. It'll enter you to win Invincible Iron Man number seven, first cameo appearance of Riri Williams this month. Head over to BryceComics.com. It's where you get first crack at new collections and discount codes. And you're also entered to win a free slab this month is the one in 50 for Dr. Doom number one, the first solo series for Dr. Doom. Follow me on Whatnot for giveaways every single show. This Friday, we're doing 50 slabs starting at $1 and a giveaway every 10 minutes. Follow me over on Instagram for fresh content and trades for grails. And thank you as always for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bryce Comics.